Hello everyone. Okay, I'm Mr. R. This is Mr. J. Hey. So for today's video, we're going to do our practical uh, exercise for our 2014 paper. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, for this paper, we are going to determine a value for the acceleration due to gravity G using a pendulum. However, this is a modified pendulum. As you can see, there is a bottom clamp that's being attached to the retort stand that will change the way we do things uh, that was as compared to our usual ways. Okay, So, for this setup, the length L here is the distance or the length from the split cork to the bob. So let me show you the setup right over here. So, Mr. J is going to show you how we measure the accurate uh, length. So, from the bob here, we have to take the measurement from the middle of the bob right all the way to the bottom of the wooden uh, block. Okay? So, as you can see, it is around 49. 5 centimeters. Okay. Yeah. So we got 49.5 centimeters. Okay. So do take note that you cannot change this length at all times. So how do we do this? We ensure that it is tightly clamped. Okay. Now moving on. Okay. The length small l here is what we will be interested in next. We will be focusing on this. So all lengths to be recorded to the nearest 0 0.1 cm. Just to make sure we are at the right track, we have to use the length between 38.5 to 39.5 for this small L. So, Mr. J will show you how this is measured accurately. So we take our measurement from the middle of the rod all the way up to the same bottom of the clamp. Okay? So for in this case, we will get a measurement of Roughly 39.0 cm. Mm, is I that right, Mr. J? I think I'm seeing a bit, uh, it seems a bit closer, like 39.4. It might have shifted a bit. I think we'll use that instead. All right, so let's use 39.4 cm. Sounds good too. Are we still matching in? Yes. We are, right? Okay. I think that's fine. Okay, so the L, we got 39.4. And then we can calculate X. That'll be 49.5 minus 39.4, getting us. All right. I think that's 10.1. Yes. Cool. Okay, now, once we have recorded the values here, it is time for us to do our measurement of the timings for the swings. Now, going to the actual setup, okay, let me just place the camera here. How we will record the timings for this setup is as, uh, is as such, okay? So we have our stopwatch. Maybe Mr. J can uh, move the camera to see it closer. All right. So, you will need to shift the bob uh, at a tiny angle, roughly around 10 degrees, or around 10 centimeters, sorry, uh, 15 centimeters, away from the middle bar. Okay? Once you have done that, you just start releasing it. This is what you will observe. Okay? It's quite cool and interesting, by the way. Now, how do we measure this? It's by actually counting the number of times it touches this middle bar over here. How do we start counting? At first, we start off by saying start, and then the next time it touches the rod again, we start counting one, all the way until 10, and then we end our stopwatch count. Okay, so let's begin. Also remember, as we start swinging it, do let it run a few times before you start the measurement proper. Okay, so are you ready, Mr. J? Yep, let's go. Let's do this. Okay. Now, let it run for a few uh, swings. So I'm ready. So I'll give you a view of my stopwatch. Sorry, I'll block it, Mr. R. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's no good. Worries. That's better. Okay, let me do it again. Okay. So let's start. Give it a few tries. So I'm ready. So here we go. Start. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay? So, here is the timing for our first pendulum swing. And then the, the timing I have here is 10.37 seconds. So, let's go over to our table. 
the markers behind you, uh, Mr. R. Oh, sorry. So that means write down the value. Sorry. So the value that we had was labeled as T1. Okay? So I'm just going to show you here. The value for our timing is 10.37 seconds. Okay? So we're going to move on to the next range. So between 32.5 to 33.5. Okay? So Mr. J will now adjust the length accordingly. Yeah, all right. Okay. Let's do it. So we got to actually make um, this bar over here slightly higher. Um, previously it was about 39, so yes. I think this will... 32, hopefully. We'll try that out. Okay, so it's over here. Yes. Um, now it looks like it's on a 29, so let's push it down. What, what does it have to be again, Mr. R? It must be around 33.0, so the measurement must be from the middle of the rod, okay? Uh -huh. So here we have the 50 mark, all the way up to... I got a 20... Uh, sorry, I got a 32.6. Is that alright? 32.6 is perfectly fine. That's fair. Okay. Alright, then I think we can use this. Alright. Yeah. So we have it all set. Cool. So let's sorry. begin our swing, okay? So Mr. Sorry. J has... 32.6, right? 32.6. Alright. Okay. So now we have to start with our timing again. So right. just like how we did before... Okay, it is just a repeat of the same procedure. So I'm just going to start. I think is going to record. Okay. Just a tiny angle will do, and then I will begin. Here we go. Okay, let it run for a few swings, and then once you are ready, we'll begin. Start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and stop. Okay, 10. So this is the timing that I got. 11.75. Okay? So let's move on to the table to record what we have found. Okay, oh, that's one. interesting, isn't it, Mr. R? It seems that the time has increased. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to skip this for now. I'm just going to record the timings first. It seems as though the timing has increased. However, we have decreased this small value of L, actually. So does that mean that when the value of L decreases, the time should increase? It seems like so. Interesting. However, yeah. okay, as good scientists, we need to carry out more, more uh, readings so that we can determine whether this is a fact. Okay? So I guess you, uh, you can now continue on with the paper. So this will be the conclusion for our 2014 O-Level paper. So this is Mr. R. That is Mr. Okay. Signing off. Bye. Bye.